Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday morning, and I'm excited to be here. Oh my goodness, I am so excited about this week. Today, we are going to talk about unworthiness, rejection. How do you overcome that? Can you really overcome that? Can you find your worth in Christ, and can you truly walk in it? That's what we're going to be talking about today. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Francine Ivy. I'm with Consumed by the Call Ministries. Um, we do these daily devos each weekday morning around 7.30 a.m. Central. We dig into the Word and we start our day off right. I forgot to put my microphone on, so excuse the, the little bit of sound. Um, I want to welcome everybody who is joining us live. And then those of you who are joining us in our new media our podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our listeners as well. And those of you who are joining me later by watching the replay on our Facebook Live, um, welcome. You're part of us. You're part of the CBC family. Let us know that you're there. Let us know that you're watching. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you have prayer requests, leave them in the news feed. Our prayer warriors, many of the ones who watch this news feed, are praying for you. I can promise you that. Hi, Leah. Hi, Felice. There you are. You guys joining me live. Hi, Gay. Thank you for my blessing. Catherine, Darlene. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Heather. How are you? How are those babies? I know a couple of them have been sick lately. Hi, Claudia. Good morning. Got your coffee. Amen. Leah is coming from Palm Harbor, Florida. Where's Palm Harbor, Leah? Is that near Miami? Hi, Darlene. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Felice. Good morning. Yes. How is everybody this morning? Yay. Good morning, Jessica. Are you on your way to work? Are you on your way to work? Yay. Maggie, how's Mobile? How is everybody doing in Mobile? I miss you guys. Yay. I'm so glad you're joining. Um, how's everybody? I mean, I know we're ramping up for summer. Many of you are wrapping up the school year. It's probably getting a little crazy. I know many of you have graduating seniors. And um, some of you who watch are graduating college. Can you believe it? Oh, my goodness. I'm seeing so many of the graduations and people just finishing up. Oh, my goodness. It's been really, really awesome. And I know it's kind of crazy at the end of a school year as everybody's ramping up for summer. Hope you're planning for an awesome summer. Hope you're planning for awesome vacations and some good, awesome, yes, ma'am, on my way to work. Awesome. Good morning. Kat, how are you? Are y'all done? Y'all are getting done, aren't you? Getting ready for summer. Good morning, Judy. Sweet sister. Good morning. Sweet sister of God in Missouri, the sun is shining and is beautiful here. I love that. Hi, Caitlin. How are you? Good morning. Yes, ready for summer. Yes, me too. Me too. I love this warm weather. I'm so enjoying it. So enjoying it. I know the kids are so excited that our neighborhood pool is up and running. They are ready to be at the pool this summer. So we love that. We have a, we have a pool in our neighborhood that we can go to. Isn't that awesome? Good morning, good morning. So we're going to jump in today. We're going to dig into the word unworthy. What, um, what can we overcome that? Do you ever have a feeling of rejection, unworthiness, um, shame, those things Satan uses against us and it makes me angry to see a child of God dealing with this, dealing with this, and we have got to overcome it. Can we overcome it? What does the word say about it? Are you ready? We're going to dig in. So let's look first at the dictionary version of unworthy. It is an adjective, unworthy, comparative adjective, unworthier, superlative adjective. It means not deserving effort, attention, or respect. He is unworthy of trust or unfit to hold an office. Having little value or merit. And I hear so many people say that they feel unworthy of something, unworthy. And as a child of God, that is not your portion. It's one of our deepest needs and greatest heartaches is, um, as a woman, is that we want to know, am I beautiful and am I worthy to be pursued and fought for? And fought for. 
I know Grayson desired when, when he was born, I'd already had two daughters. Um, Reagan is 22 now, Peyton is 17, and uh, Grayson is 12. And um, when I had the girls, I taught them that they were princesses, taught them that they were God's daughters, which made them king's daughters, which made them princesses. So when the little boy came and we began to talk to him, um, I remember telling him that he was my prince. And he says, no, mommy, I'm not a prince. I want to be a superhero. Several years later, after we laughed about that for um, several years, I he began to explain why he didn't want to be a prince because all the princes that he saw on TV on the girls Disney shows they didn't fight they were just people love stories and he's like I want to fight I want to fight and so he finally relented that he would be a superhero or a power ranger or he would be a knight because a knight fights there is an innate thing in a young man to want to fight for their lady, want to fight for their lady. And there's an innate part of us that want to be fought for. We want to know that we're beautiful. We want to know that, that we are worthy to be pursued and that we are worthy to be fought for. And I believe that that's the heart of every child of God. Um, in Zephaniah three seventeen, it says, the Lord, your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you in his love. He will rejoice over you with singing, with singing. That's Zephaniah three seventeen. John three sixteen says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I remember the day, March 31st of 1990, when I married Wade Ivy. And I remember when I took his name and it wasn't just a few days later, he asked me if I was sad that I had changed my name. And I just giggled inside. I said, Wade, I've been waiting my whole life to find out my last name. I remember thinking, I bear his name. I walk in his authority. He is pleased with me. I'll never forget rounding the corner in my beautiful white dress and watching his face as he saw me walk down that aisle, knowing that I had done my hair the way he loved to see my hair. I had bought a dress that I knew that he would love. And I always loved watching Wade's amazing blue eyes stare at me with such pleasure. He loved me. I loved the way he looked at me. I loved the way he talked about me. Um, he would literally stand in the pulpit and speak about his love for me. And I loved that. But even more than being Wade's wife, I love that I am a child of God, that I bear his name. I am an image bearer of Jesus Christ, of God himself. God created me in his image. I wear the righteousness of God because Jesus Christ died and I accepted his gift of salvation. I now bear his righteousness, not my sin. He traded it out. I was bought with the highest of prices, the very life of the Son of God which 1 Corinthians 6.20 tells me how valuable I am. He pursued me. He fought for me. He thinks I am beautiful, and he gives me his authority. I am worthy because Jesus Christ says I am, because Jesus Christ died and gave me that worthiness. You see, it is arrogance, and it is um, pride that says that I am great. That's not what I'm talking about. To combat unworthiness, you have to know what you're worth. And I am worth the, the life and death of Jesus Christ and how he died for me. And I now bear his name, his image, and his righteousness. You see, confidence and wisdom says that the price and the value that I am is because of Jesus Christ. You see, I can look at a violin and be thoroughly impressed. And then I look at the tag on the inside. And then when I see that its name is Stradivarius, oh my goodness, I would hold it so much more gently, wouldn't I? Because Stradivarius denotes value. 
when I look at a grand piano, oh my goodness, you guys, I love grand pianos and I love the sound of them and Wade could play a grand piano like nobody's business. But if I walked up to that piano and saw the words Steinway on it, would it not denote a much deeper value? Yes. When I see a diamond, I love them. But when I see the word Tiffany on it, oh my goodness, much more value to that as well. Well, I want you to know that if you've given your life to Christ, you are given worth because you bear his name. Far better than Stradivarius or Steinway or Tiffany's is the name of Jesus Christ that you now wear. When you give your life to Christ, you bear his image. You are pursued and fought for by him and you were bought with the highest of prices, the actual life of Jesus Christ, the only begotten son, the only begotten son. He is what gives you value. Now, I want you to know something. You cannot earn his love. You cannot increase his love. You cannot diminish it either. Amen. Jesus is completely pleased with you. When you give your life to Christ, he literally takes the sin out of your life. He bared it on the cross and he literally lays his righteousness on you. It's not titles, positions, possessions, successes, or the opinions of men that denote or give you value. It is Jesus Christ himself. So how do you combat unworthiness, rejection, and shame? You tell, you absolutely annihilate the, the need for anybody else or anything or any successes to give you value. And you totally submit to the fact that it is God and God alone who gives you value. In Zephaniah 3, 17, there's one line that says, He will rejoice over you with singing. I'm going to read it again. The Lord your God. Okay? When you understand who He is, when you study and know the power of God, the value of God, his love, and who he is, when you understand the weightiness of God Almighty, the mighty one, and the fact that he saved you, when you understand the value of that, oh my goodness, you'll understand your value. It says he will rejoice over you with gladness. Do you realize that God rejoices over you when you wake up in the morning? He says, baby girl, son of God, I'm so excited you're awake. When my kids wake up and come down those stairs in just a few minutes, when they come down those stairs, everything in me goes, those are my kids. My kids, that's my daughter, my daughter and my son. They bear my image. They bear my name. Their value is more than I can express to you. That is what God does with you. When you open your eyes, when you are asleep and he looks over you, he goes, that is my child. That's where you gain your value. That's where you gain your value. He rejoices over you with gladness. He will quiet you in his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. There was a song that I sang over each of my children and I loved it and I made it personal to them. It actually was a point of grace song and I don't know why when I first had Reagan, it was the song that I loved to sing over her and since have sung over each of uh, uh, both Peyton and Grayson as I had them. And the song goes like this. God loves Peyton more than anything. God loves Peyton more than anything. More than anything he wants her to know. He loves, let's see, he'd rather die than let her go. Cause God loves Peyton more than anything. God loves Reagan more than anything. And God loves Reagan more than anything. 
More than anything he wants her to know He'd rather die than let her go Cause God loves Reagan more than anything And God loves Grayson more than anything God loves Grayson more than anything more than anything he wants him to know he'd rather die than let him go cause god loves grayson more than anything the truth of the matter is i wanted to sing over them god's love because i valued my children and i want you to know when zephaniah three seventeen says he will rejoice over you with singing it's even more than this mama over her children i value my children take my breath away and i want you to know today through the revelation of god not just my words but through the revelation of god that if you are his child he values you and in Jesus' name, I come against unworthiness and shame and rejection in, on your behalf. And I speak life, life, value. You are an image bearer, a child of the Most High God. You were paid with the most incredible price that gives you value. And that is Jesus Christ laid down his life for you to live forever with him. You are valuable. Walk in worthiness, not because of your titles, positions, successes, or the opinions of other people. You are valuable because God says you are. He knows the very hairs on your head. You bear his name and you bear his image. Do not allow Satan to speak that anymore. So when Satan comes to you and tells you in some way, in some lie, in some fashion, through fear or whatever it is, when he makes you feel unworthy, you need to say, I bear the image of my father, God. I am valuable because God says I am. <laughs> I love you guys so, so much. Oh, I hope you understand this. I hope it's deep in your heart today and that you walk in it today. Love you guys so much. I will see you soon. I hope you're taking advantage of my coaching. I hope you are going through the Bible study. I pray that you come in September to the retreat. I so want to spend time with you guys. Spend quality time in the presence of an almighty God. I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow morning. Bye.